to introduce you to two R packages called Outstream and Stray. Both are related to anomaly detection in streaming temporal data. Um, this is a joint work with Rob Hyman and Kate smith Myers. Okay, before coming to the real part of this uh, talk, I would like to start with some real-world applications um, that, um, in order to give you an idea about the significance of the study. Um, so the first uh, data set is, uh, first example is related to uh, gas or oil pipeline leakage detection. For this, uh, we can use a, a temperature sensing fiber optic cable attached along the pipeline. And um, since we are using uh, fiber optic sensor cables, each point of this sensor cable act as a sensor and generate a time series. So if I think about the entire cable, now it gives me a large collection of time series. And in a gas pipeline leakage, the scale pressurized gas can uh, cause a um, local cold zone at the surface of the pipeline. And that will be indicated by the corresponding time series. So now I have a large collection of time series. And if I can identify the anomalous time series within this large collection, then I can locate the um, pipeline leakage. The same thing happens in the water quality sensors. There are multiple sensors positioned at different geographical locations. Altogether, I'm getting a very large collection of time series. And if I can identify the anomalous time series uh, within this large collection, then I can locate the water contaminated areas. So th it's the same thing happens in railway tracking systems, network intrusion detection systems. In short, all these applications uh, generate millions or even billions of time series simultaneously. And the underlying research question is, what are the anomalous time series within this large collection? And this is what we are trying to address from our package, Outstream, Outstream Outlier Detection in Data Streams. This is still at the develop, uh, under development, so um, you can have access to the development version to my GitHub account. Um, in this proposed framework, uh, we use feature-based representation of time series um, as it allows us to reduce the dimension of the original problem and thereby allow us to deal with massive amount of data efficiently. So for this uh, current framework, we have selected 14 features and these are the 14 features uh, that we have selected. Um, we selected these 14 features uh, mainly focusing the uh, two applications that we are currently working with. Um, here you can see um, this is a real data set obtained using a fiber optic cable and this black blob is corresponding to an intrusion event, intrusion attack. And these are the 14 features extracted from each of these time series. Altogether I have 600 time series, so here I have 600 time points. And this part is corresponding to this intrusion attack. So you can see almost all our features can capture this intrusion attack. And um, this is how we selected our features. We selected our features so that they can capture this type of interesting events. By extracting features, what we're actually trying to do is we are converting our original problem into a high dimensional problem. So altogether I have 14 features, so I'm getting a high dimensional data set with 14 dimensions. Now, each point of this high dimensional space is corresponding to a single time series in my original collection. Altogether I have 600 time series, so here I'm getting 600 times points. Um, um, with that, now I'm coming to the main contribution of our proposed framework. Um, here we have done two main contributions. First, we propose a framework that provides early detection of anomalies within a large collection of streaming data. And also, we propose an algorithm that adapts to non-stationarity. In machine learning context, this is known as concept drift. Uh, I'll talk about it later. Um, in this proposed algorithm, we have done two Main, we have two main assumptions. Um, first one is related to the definition of an anomaly. Here, in this case, we define an anomaly as an observation uh, that is very unlikely given the recent distribution of a given system. Basically, we are defining an anomaly with respect to density. And the second assumption is um, 
we assume that a representative data set is available for the uh, a representative data set of the system's typical behavior is available to build a model for the typical behavior. But here, I would like to make a special comment on this. Now here I'm saying that uh, we need to have a representative data set for the typical behavior of the system. But it doesn't mean that we need to have a representative samples, representative data sets from all possible uh, typical behaviors, which is unrealistic. Because uh, there can be a new typical behavior in the future. We cannot find a representative data set. So here, the basic idea is we need to have a warm-up data set to identify the initial values of the parameter. With that, I'm coming to the proposed algorithm. Um, in this proposed algorithm, we have two main phases called offline phase and online phase. Um, in the offline phase, we try to build a model for the system's typical behavior. Basically, we are trying to identify an anomalous threshold, of anomalous threshold, and once we identify the anomalous threshold, then the online phase is activated and tests for newly arrived data. Um, I'll walk you through this algorithm. Um, I'll, um, let me start from offline phase. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for, to start the offline phase, we need to have a representative sample for the typical behavior of the system. So this is my representative data uh, sample for the typical behavior. And then using this function, we can extract 14 features. Then I'm getting a high dimensional problem. Um, once we extract 14 features, then the dimension is further reduced by applying principal component analysis. Using the first two principal components, we define this 2D feature space. Now, originally, I have 600 time series. Here again, I'm getting 600 time points. Once I obtain this uh, 2D feature space, then I estimate the probability density function of this 2D feature space. For this, uh, for this, I'm using kernel density estimation method. And then after that, we draw a large number of extremes from this estimated probability density function. Here, uh, extremes are the most improbable values. Once we obtain those values, then we apply this psi transformation. We are now this psi transformation map the density values back into a space where we can fit a Gumbel distribution. And once we obtain that distribution, then we apply extreme value theory and identify an anomalous threshold. Once the anomalous threshold is calculated, then the online phase is activated and tests for newly arrived data. Here, um, um, at the very beginning, I told that uh, our focus is on streaming data. So to deal with streaming data, we are using a moving window. We slide the window one step ahead every time we get a new data set. And in this panel, um, here this gray color area is corresponding to the latest typical behavior, and the red points are the uh, anomalous points in my current window. And even from this graph, we can clearly see that there's something happened at this point, and even from the original graph, we can see the actual anomalous event happened at that point. So that's the basic idea of this proposed algorithm. Um, with that, I'm coming to the second contribution, anomaly detection with non-stationarity. Here, the idea is sometimes the typical behavior of the system can change over time. In such a situation, our system should be able to adapt to this changing environment automatically. In machine learning context, uh, this is known as concept drift. Um, um, in machine learning, this non-stationarity or this concept drift can happen in many different ways, but in machine learning context uh, literature, they mainly talk about four special cases of uh, concept drifts called sudden, gradual, recurring, and incremental. But non-stationary can happen as a mixture or as a combination of these cases as well. But to give you a basic idea of our proposed algorithm, um, I'm going to use a very simple example, the sudden concept drift. Um, excuse me. Okay, um, so this is my first window. Um, altogether, I have a large collection of time series. And from this window, I get um, the 2D feature space. And when I get the 2D feature space, this is what I'm getting. And then I think about another window and get the 2D feature space and project it into the same space. And now I think about, if I think about 
these two distributions, I cannot see a big difference between these two distributions. Now, I move the window one step ahead and project the 2D feature space onto the same space. Now I can see that there's a clear difference between these two distributions. This is what we, are go this is what we have used to identify an occurrence of a concept drift. Basically, what we are trying to do is we are trying to test whether there's a significant difference between the latest typical behavior and the new typical behavior. If the difference is significant, then we are going to claim it as an occurrence of a concept drift. So for this uh, hypothesis tested, we use this uh, squared discrepancy measure uh, because um, its asymptotic normality assumption allows us to bypass uh, the computation intensive calculations that are used in normal resampling methods. Having a faster uh, result, having fast results is really important when dealing with streaming data. Okay, so that is the basic idea of this uh, algorithm. Um, so uh, to activate this uh, concept drift uh, function, we just need to add another argument, concept drift equal to true. That will activate that function. Okay, so that is the basic idea of the first package of stream. With that, I'm coming to the second package straight, stream anomaly. Again, this is a very young package, so um, you can have access to the development version through my GitHub account. Um, here, uh, we ha again, we have done two main contributions. Um, first, we propose a framework to detect anomalies in high dimensional data. Basically, our proposed algorithm tries to address uh, uh, the limitations of HD outlier algorithm. Um, and also, we proposed an algorithm to de uh, detect anomalies in streaming temporal data. Now, in this case, this is how we define an anomaly. We define an anomaly as an observation that deviates markedly with the majority with a large distance gap. So in odd stream, we define an anomaly with respect to density. Now here we define an anomaly with respect to distance. Um, I'll give you the basic idea behind this proposed framework. So. Uh, in, in this case, our main focus is on high-dimensional data, but um, to give you the basic idea, I'm going to use this 2D, two-dimensional space so that you can get the idea very clearly. Okay, now I'm having this type of a high-dimensional data set. As the first step, uh, we normalize the columns of the data. Uh, this is to prevent uh, variables with large variance having disproportionate influence on the Euclidean distance, because uh, distance, now that is the information that we are going to use to detect anomalies. And once we normalize the data set, then we cluster these data points. For this clustering um, process, we are using lead algorithm. In lead algorithm, what it does is it, uh, it uses um, a ball uh, with a fixed radius, and using that ball, it forms clusters. Um, once it forms clusters, um, then it selects one member from each and every cluster. Um, and once we select one member from each and every cluster, then we calculate the k nearest neighbor distance with the maximum gap. We calculate the k nearest neighbor distances and select the k nearest, the, the, uh, k nearest neighbor distance with the maximum gap. For an example, here we have an isolated point, so uh, the k nearest neighbor distance with the maximum gap is my first nearest neighbor distance, but for these two, the second nearest neighbor distance gives me the maximum gap. Once I get that information, then I sort the resulting k nearest neighbor distances. And then after that, again using extreme value theory, I identify an anomalous threshold. After, after identifying that anomalous threshold, then I can detect these points as anomalies. So one important advantage is uh, here. In this algorithm, we can identify both isolated anomalies and also an, um, anomalous clusters of points as well. So, um, um, now, as I mentioned earlier, our, our real focus is on identifying anomalies within a large collection of time series. How can we take this idea to, identi to, do, uh, to identify anomalies within a large collection of time series? Again, uh, we are dealing with uh, streaming data, so I'm again using a moving window to deal with this streaming data. Then again, uh, then after that, I extract time series features from uh, these time series. Then I'm converting my original problem into a high dimensional space. And remember, uh, we develop our stray for high dimensional data, 
and then now we have a high dimensional data space. So now once I apply a stray algorithm, then it can identify the anomalous points. And these anomalous points are corresponding to the anomalous time series within my large collection. So that's the whole idea of the second package, stray. Now we have two packages for the same purpose, stray and outstream. Why do we need to have two packages? Okay, I'm going to start from here. Imagine this is our data set, and here I have two anomalous time series within this large collection. And when I produce the 2D feature space, these two points are corresponding to those two anomalous time series. If I calculate, now straight, there are, we have defined an anomaly with respect to distance. So if I calculate the nearest neighbor distances, for these points I will get a very small nearest neighbor distances, but for these two points I'm getting a very large nearest neighbor distance. Using that, uh, using that information, we can, we can tell that, okay, these are the two anomalies. But we cannot expect this type of a clear data set every time. For an example, imagine, uh, for, for an example, I'm going back to my original example, uh, detecting uh, gas pipeline leakages. In a escape pressure, when, when there's a gas pipeline leakage, it will not affect only to one data, one point. It will affect to the neighboring points in a gradually decaying order of magnitude. So in such a situation, instead of giving this type of isolated point, it will slowly deviate from the majority. So here the, I have the high density region, I have the low density uh, points, which are corresponding to outliers. So if I calculate the nearest neighbor distances, now I will not be able to pick these points. So there I need to have that information density. So here in Stray, we don't, we, we, we don't have to have a, a training data set, but for this odd stream, we have to have a training data set. But it has its own strength. So people can select um, these uh, two uh, packages according to their application. Especially if you, ha if you know that your sensors are independent, then most probably you will get this type of a data set. You, you can try stray, otherwise you can, we can go for odd stream. That brings my presentation to the end. Um, thank you for joining. Any questions? Okay. Two hundred. Yep. Yes. So the question is, when um, when um, the concept drift happened at the very first time, uh, does my algorithm consider it as a concept drift? Okay. I have an example here. It's a very good question because um, this actually uh, this has been discussed in the past literature as well. Now this is where the atom, um, concept drift happens. So at the very beginning, the my algorithm detects it as an anomaly, but now it tells that the whole system for the it gives uh, anomalies for the whole system. For it to become a concept drift, we it need to have some time. If, the, if this behavior continues to happen for a certain period, then it will, I can see that from here. If the behavior continues to happen, then my algorithm understands, okay, this is going to happen for a long period of time, so I need to update my model. So after some time, it updates the model and um, start to give a, um, outputs with high accuracy. Sorry. Yes, uh, so uh, that is because of the second uh, uh, algorithm identifying non-stationarity. If the, in the presence of a non-stationarity, the threshold is updated according to the first algorithm. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.